Hey everybody, it is Vince from Spradley Kia here in Pueblo, Colorado, and today I have a treat for you. It is kind of a windy day, so I'm gonna try and do this video backwards, starting from the inside and working my way out. Uh, but today I have a 2024 Kia Telluride SX Prestige in jungle green with the sage green interior. Uh, this is a customer order that ordered from me via YouTube, which is really cool. And I'm shipping it from Colorado all the way to New Jersey. And the customer told me that the shipping price was under $1,200 to get it from Colorado to New Jersey. Uh, so that is pretty cool because I believe that is a bargain. So if I can help you find a vehicle, we sell at MSRP. I do like it that my customers are responsible for their own shipping but it's insanely easy to do insanely easy to uh, set up and i can help you with that and apparently it is not that expensive so uh today i'm going to show you this sx prestige in jungle green and it's a little windy outside so i'm going to try and stay out of the wind as much as possible uh so here we go Right away, what I like about that is you do have the amber lights right there, big and bold on the SX Prestige. Actually, on any 2024 Telluride, they do come with the amber lights now. You have this tiger nose grill with the Kia signature badging right up front. You have your fog lamps right down there. And then uh, I have the daytime running lamps running. Uh, and then I love the blacked out wheels uh, on this trim level as well. I'm kind of doing this at dusk, so I'm kind of losing the sunlight, but as you can see, this car looks beautiful kind of on a clear day, kind of at dusk. I personally like that they don't have the word Telluride across the grill anymore, across the front hood. That's actually a plus in my opinion. Uh, you have these big, bold 20 inch tires. I love how on this model you have the mirror caps that are green and then black. You have your one touch button right here to, to lock and unlock the doors. It's gonna beep because I have the keys in my pocket. But I love the one touch uh, door handles there which you can configure in the settings, I'll show you that. You have the push and pop gas cap. So right there, uh, as long as the car is unlocked, uh, that gas cap will open. If it is locked, that does not open. Let's see if we can get these Michelin tires again back in focus. So you have these nice, beautiful Michelin tires. Uh, and again, they are on uh, 20 inch uh, wheels. You have the black fascia that kind of goes, I like how this line goes all the way from around the front, all the way back, all the way up, all the way over, and then continues to the rear. you have your parking sensors and your your uh, your sensors you have your exhaust your x-line badging which is really cool Kia Telluride badge right across the back real big and bold you do have the windshield wiper here kind of have your little lip up here that helps with the rain aggressive roof rack rails on this guy and then uh, this customer did add the uh, the crossbars which looks really cool uh, I can't imagine they have a lot of rugged cars and uh, rugged looking SUVs in uh, New Jersey but uh, this one definitely looks rugged and it is nice and beautiful full disclosure this is our very first uh, jungle green which looks really cool haven't seen one before right now and I'm a fan. Even though my wife has a jungle green plug-in hybrid Sportage, uh, it actually looks really good on the Telluride, especially with the sage green interior, which I'll show you that here in a second. To open, you do have your right underneath the U. It'll give you uh, an automatic tailgate. You can also open it from the key fob as well. And then you have these little buttons right up here. 
coming, taking a look at the back. So this guy came with the carpeted um, seat protector uh, that goes up, up over the third row. So your third row seat is right there, which a full size adult can fit into. And then you have these little pull straps here. And those little pull straps will just raise that up um, and it's super easy to put up and super easy to put down. You have your child anchor locks right across the back. So if you have three little ones, uh, you do have room for the three uh, car seats, depending upon size, obviously some car seats are pretty huge. Um, you have your second row depressors. So if you press one, you know, left or right, it'll drop those second row up there. So if I hit this right one, I don't, well, that uh, passenger seats push back pretty far, I could tell. So let me hit the left one and it folds down flat. I like to call it near flat, but it folds down pretty flat on the Telluride. In your third row, you do have your phone chargers um, along the wall there. So you have one there, and you have one on that side as well. You have these cool little seat belt hooks for these guys. So when your seat is kind of down like this, you know, kind of ready for cargo, uh, you have these cool little seat belt hooks right here. And let's see if I can get it up into focus and frame. Trying to do this one handed as well. And then this guy comes down right in there. That way they're not rattling around uh, on you. Your third row seat belt is right up there and that also gets uh, to get plugged into right up there as well. And then you have that side also. But what's really cool is, well, I like the cargo net. So cargo net not installed yet, obviously, but you have this really nifty cargo net, which to me is very, very helpful, very, very useful with groceries. Um, my wife, I know, loves hers, uh, but you can open this back part up to the regular cubby space, and you have an insane amount of cubby space down underneath here. Uh, your spare tire is right underneath there. You pop that open and you can spool it down, um, but you have that cool uh, cubby space down here. So Telluride does have, in its class, more room behind the third row than any other SUV in its class, and that includes the Highlander. Um, Palisade, well Palisade is pretty much equal, but um, Telluride keeps uh, keeps killing it when it comes to that kind of stuff. Now, what's really, let me show you. So, this guy has the sunshade holder. So, sunshade holder, you pull this back. Oh, kind of missing that. Okay, let's demonstrate this guy again. So, we're gonna put this little seatbelt clip holder over, get it out of the way. I'm trying to do this one-handed, put it in there. Nice and neat. Okay, so you have your sunshade holder. Sunshade holder comes back. Oops. There we go. Up and around. So now if you have your valuables, if you got stuff down there you don't want people to see, you can definitely hide it uh, underneath. Now, a lot of people, they're like, oh, I only use that a couple times a year or especially on Black Friday, that kind of stuff. What do I do with it? Do I put it in my garage? You can but a lot of people don't realize you can actually store it down there. See that little hole? There's one on opposite sides. Under, uh, behind there is your toolkit as well. I don't know if you can kind of see it back there, but your toolkit is back there for your jack and your, your little tool to spool down the tire. But if you, that guy uses compression, so you just pull that in and then it will fit underneath the, the bottom here and then you can take it with you. So kind of neat. A lot of people don't realize that you could do that. Uh, but you can. So, a lot of uh, cool little information back here. You can do this cargo net. You can kind of place it at those little hooks right over there. Yeah, you got the hooks right over here. Um, the hooks right up here. Different configurations for that cargo net. You can do it standing up. You can do it lying flat. Um, all kinds of different combinations. Now, this does have a... Um, where you walk up to the back of the trunk and then the, uh, the trunk will raise. So I'll show you that more in the settings, but you can do the, uh, the remote lift and the remote close, which is kind of cool. Um, and I'll show you guys that more about that in the settings, but that is the third row on the tire. Let me go ahead and close that guy right there. That way it's nice and clean. Okay, since I already depressed that one seat, let's walk over here. So I'm gonna go over here. And one reason, always a car driving by when I do these videos. If you watch my other videos, you'll hear me say that all the time because it's true. 
One thing that I really like about the sage green interior is that at nighttime, it kind of looks like dark gray. Uh, people say it looks like dark gray now, but I can definitely see the green. Um, I'm a fan. Um, when we were getting my wife's car, I was like, let's get the sage green because I've always wanted dark gray interior and I'm a fan of how that works. You have another seatbelt oppressor here as well with the little hooks, that way they don't rattle when you drive. Airbags are in the, in the seats there. Uh, super easy to get in and out of. There is plenty of room, but to scoot this seat forward to get into the third row, there's a button right up here. There's also a button right down there. Uh, but if I press this button here, she slides forward. Now, obviously these seats are down. Uh, you can definitely watch one of my other Telluride videos and you'll see me climb back there. But uh, this is what it looks like with the third row kind of down. Uh, but super easy to get in here. You have a handrail right here to, uh, to get into. Um, and then you, you can kind of see how that works. So super, super easy child anchor locks on the back of the second rows as well. And then you just use a little bit of elbow grease and then there it is. Um, obviously you can't sit like that, but this seat does scoot all the way back. And then you have another little bar down there. See it? A little bar right there. So again, doing this one handedly, you can scoot that guy all the way back. Now these seats are pushed all the way back, which is really cool because now I could demonstrate how much room in the second row there is. There's actually quite a bit of room. Um, you have your leather mat pocket right here. You have your mat pocket right over there. You have your cool little hooks right here. And there's also one on the passenger seat. Um, women with purses really tend to like this because then you can kind of uh, hang your bag there and there and then you can cross reach, uh, which is, you know, nifty. You have USB, you have charging ports here. I believe those are USB-Cs. We have charging ports in the seats for your second row passengers. You have the, um, well, let me show you on this side. It's just easier. Closing my door. You have, there's the sun, sunshades. Kind of useful right now. So you have your sunshades here in the second row. On this package here, you do have heated and air conditioned seats in your second row. And then you have your one touch window controls. Super, super cool. Super, super nice. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on some air conditioned seats. You can see you have three levels. You have low, medium, and high. That is high, that is medium, that is low. And you feel that kick on right away. I could already feel it not only on uh, my bottom, but also going up my back, which is kind of cool. Uh, and you really do feel that right away. Um, you have a reticulating armrest here. So you can set this to many different positions. Not too shabby. Um, and then it goes all the way up as well. You also down here have your, um, it's kind of dark, but you can see you have your um, 110 volt. And then this guy is your 115. So you can charge things back here that require, is there a way that I could turn on the light so you could see that better? Um, uh, let's get right up in there. So, it's super dark in here, but you can definitely see those are the two charging ports down there. Uh, and then you can, that's a 112 volt, uh, that's a 12 volt, and then the 115. A lot of leg room back here. You have your cup holders back here for your second row. You have cup holders down here. So. All right, I opened the door. That way we can get a little bit more light in here. I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier, but then you can see uh, the difference of what that little charging nook does in the daytime with the door open versus in the dark. Um, and I guess that's why when you open this guy, you have a little red light to kind of help visibility there. Um, pretty cool. Let's talk about climate. So right up top, you have your climate, which uh, you can control from back here. So I'm gonna touch little blower speeds and you can see how you can set your climate. So those are my fans. You can set your directionals right here. So right there, that is feet. I press it again, that is, oh, sorry, it's right here, feet and face. If you have both of them activated, you have feet and face together. And then you have these little vents right up here and you can open and close them right there. So kind of cool. And you can definitely feel the air on your feet as well. 
Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn those off. You have auto climate also where you can set that and then you have your temperature right over here. So blue is for cold, hot, I think it goes down to 62. And then you can set your fan speed. So not too shabby, turn it off. You can turn it off right there. You can also control it from the center console up front. You have your lights that you can press uh, to, to turn on to get light back there. Should have used that earlier. Over here on the A pillar, you do see where you have the airbags that uh, would come out uh, if you were in, t in an accident. And then you also have your adjustable seat belts. So that's kind of cool. So you can move this up, you can move this down, depending upon how tall your uh, passengers are. You can also do the same thing there with the driver. What am I missing in the second row? Um, you do have this really cool premium headliner right up here. Don't want to touch it too much, but it is nice and soft. People love it. Um, and then you have your dual sunroofs uh, back here. I'll open it later so you can see it, but you have this big, beautiful sunroof for your second and third row people. And then you have your sunroof up here. You do not have a big, gigantic panoramic sunroof on this model. Um, I've been told it's because of the weight of the glass that they want to make sure they, they make that as efficient as possible. Um, I also believe it has a lot to do with the air conditioning unit as well. Um, but that is one reason you don't get a panoramic sunroof in these vehicles um, until they can get that glass weight down. All right, there's a nice little shot of the cabin, but now let's go to my favorite part of this car and that's gonna be the driver's position because there is a lot of cool stuff there. Actually, I'm gonna stop off at the passenger position because I've gotten a lot of cool um, feedback that says that when you guys are watching these videos, no one ever shows you the passenger seat and if there are controls over here. So on this model, you do have the one touch controls for forward and backward and reclining the seat. You got the lumbar right there. Um, you still have your one touch window controls right there. And then this guy is insanely roomy in the passenger seat. Um, but I was told that not a lot of reviewers, and honestly, I don't do this, but I'm gonna start, uh, is what it kind of looks like in the passenger. You do have this cool little cubby hole down here as well. You have a big, beautiful glove box, which we, uh, at my dealership, we provide you the window sticker, which is in the glove box. And uh, sir, if you're watching your um, legal documents, I'm gonna have shipped with the glove box. They're gonna be in the glove box as well. MSRP 54755 plus taxes and fees. And then I have my customer do the shipping. So that's kind of how that works. Um, also, these are your keys for your roof rack rails. Um, they're gonna be in the glove box as well, sir. Um, but these guys will um, lock and unlock the racks that are on top of the car. That is good to know. And then you have the little tool as well. So that is also in the glove box. You can kind of see some instructions right here on how to do that, uh, which are in the glove box. And then I will also put your user manual in there as well, along with your temporary uh, plate. So just want to get some housekeeping guys out of the way for my customer. Heated seats, air conditioned seats right here, pretty nifty uh, for driver and passenger. Uh, you have your wireless phone charger right here, USB-C, USB, your 12 volt, uh, just like in the second row. You have your little change holder, uh, cup holders again. There's cup holders all over this car. You have cup holders in the seats. You have cup holders in the doors. Uh, by in the seats, I mean right here, which technically isn't the seat, but you have like cup holders right there in the doors up here um, in the third row. They're everywhere. You have your different drive modes. So you have comfort, sport, uh, smart, eco and snow. Uh, so if you were to go to snow mode, it gives you extra traction. Anything that's highlighted orange is uh, going to be what you are on or it is on like right here those are your forward parking sensors and they are on you have your camera so if i press that guy it's going to give you your camera view which is pretty cool um, and inside camera view we have the new augmented reality so you can see in real time what is going on around you so definitely uh something pretty nifty those are real images. You can see the cars going by the highway right up there, uh, but that is a 3D view of what is around me. Uh, and then you can also switch it into a tow mode. 
because these guys can tow uh, 5,000 pounds, well, 5,500 pounds now, and then you can go into kind of your standard mode. If you're backing up and it starts beeping, it's gonna start beeping at you right here at that yellow line. The closer you get to hitting something, the, the faster it's gonna beep. If you get to a single tone, you're about to hit something or you already kind of have, uh, which is uh, pretty interesting. You have your settings, so you can do parking distance warnings, top view parking lines, rear view parking lines. Um, this car is insanely customizable. So if there's anything in this car that you don't or want it to do, uh, you can more than likely find it in the settings. Little house takes you home, so that kind of takes you back to the main screen. But yeah, you can access that from the parking button right there. Uh, electronic parking brake, you have auto hold, auto off. Auto off is an interesting polarizing feature. Um, that's where the vehicle will kind of act like it's shut off when you are at a stoplight or when you are um, like picking up something at a drive through that kind of thing. It only does it when the ideal temperature is right outside. It's not gonna do it in the winter. Like the stars have to align for that feature to, um, to, to be activated. Um, and if you don't want to use it, all you do is press that off and then it'll be off. Uh, I'm sorry, auto off right there. So auto hold is quietly my fi my favorite feature. Um, that is where, it, like, again, if you're at a drive through or with me picking up my kid from practice or anywhere, you can put your foot down on the brake, press that button, and then you're going to see auto hold appear on the dash. Um, I'll, I'll show it more when I'm in the driver's seat. And then you can take your feet off the brake, off the ex and then that way you can rela relax your feet. So kind of interesting, and it's just, and then when you go, all you do is hit the accelerator, and then you just go. So uh, pretty nifty. I actually enjoy auto hold quite a bit. In this vehicle, you can lock your rear wheels as well. Uh, so if you're towing something, if it's bad weather, uh, you can lock that rear wheels. And again, anytime it's orange, that means it is on. And then you can see that, oops, right there on the dash. Uh, right there where it's on or it's off let's talk about drive modes real quick so drive modes um i love eco you're gonna get the best gas mileage in eco eco to me is the best uh comfort my wife swears by comfort um it'll learn how you drive in a way so it will um it will throw you it'll keep you in eco for the most part but then if you're gonna overtake someone on the highway or do something that you're gonna you know if you gun it it's gonna throw you into sport uh, and then take you back down to eco. So basically it learns how you drive. Uh, sport mode is actually really cool. Again, it tightens up that transmission, makes it really fun to drive. Um, you really have that sporty feel. Um, it's something that I would definitely recommend. Um, and then you have smart. I just realized I explained comfort the way smart works. So switch that. Comfort is actually just kind of letting you take those bumps easily. Um, it, it keeps you in like a nice little, um, really easy suspension feel it, it, it's it's what it sounds like it's a comfortable driving experience um, it's all about how tight you want that suspension to feel smart is the one that will adapt to you and learn how you go sorry i messed that up uh, but that is just switch comfort and smart and then you have the right answer um, let's go with your uh, climate controls right here. You do have dual climate controls, so driver and passenger can be at different temperatures. You can also have a button here to control the rear temperature. And if you can see and you press rear, you have your rear controls that you can manipulate. You can lock your rear controls right there. So if you don't want your back passengers playing around with it, you can lock it. You can turn on and off the auto dehumidifier, uh, auto controls. Uh, so steering wheel warmer, uh, seat warmer, ventilation, you can do all that kind of stuff and manipulate how you want that to be up here. You also have the rear warmer ventilation, so you can set that for your back passengers. So if you want to like surprise your back passengers and turn on their cooling system or their, or their um, heating system uh, in the chairs, you can do that. And again, you can also do that for your front climate people right here, uh, just by manipulating it. So. Uh, you could play around with that kind of stuff. Little arrow takes you back. It'll take you back to the main screen. Um, you have your directionals right here. So feet, face, um, defroster, that kind of thing. All right there. Pretty easy to use. If for any reason you're saying, hey, my air conditioner is not working. It's blowing hot. You might have this AC button turned off. So that's on any Kia or any vehicle for that matter. Always make sure your AC is on. 
recirculated air is right there rear defroster is right there my favorite is blower speed i like to keep it on low and then just manipulate this blower speed and then you have your front defroster or you could turn the whole thing off um one thing that people tend to miss and i don't know why but you have your heated steering wheel right there so it's always it's already on, it's already on the left hand side then you have your heated steering wheel there you have your auto climate in that button right there and then you have your sync climate right there so sync means it's going to change it to the driver so if the driver's on low i'm on 79 i click sync i'm going to go back down to low because it will sync it to the driver's climate so if you uh, are driving with someone and then you realize they're not in the car anymore and you just want to go to yours just hit sync it'll sync it back uh, so not too shabby um, i really do like this material here on the dash it's kind of like a faux wood kind of situation i'm a big big fan of that um, you have your your vents up there um, i'm really a big fan of this dash and take a look at that screen a uh, nice big beautiful screen huge fan of that i love that in the 2024s but let's take a look at the digital mirror digital mirror is really really cool and i wish i had it in my 2023 kia um it, it, it's a tv screen so i mean you could manipulate it if you press this little guy right here now you have a rear view mirror and if you push this guy forward you have digital i mean it's everybody's kind of different but it is you know to your liking but you can choose one or the other again i'm a big fan of that if you take a look underneath you can see the buttons for your home link so if you have an electronic gate electronic garage all that kind of stuff you can press these buttons and then it'll activate your home link uh, super easy to set up uh, confer with the manual to do that uh, if you have the little clickers uh, it takes 10 seconds uh, in my experience you just press this little button that's flashing orange if you have your little clicker you press that at the same time in about 10 seconds it'll flash green and then your door will open so not not terribly hard at all but again look at the manual for different makes and models of your garage door opener you have settings right here too so these three buttons on this side are your settings so you can position that up you can position the brightness um, you can position the see the tilt so just play around with what you like and what makes sense to you but uh, the digital mirror is really cool and I wish I had one uh, you have your sunglass holder right there pretty nifty considering a lot of the Kias don't have those anymore you can control your lights right there uh, Kia connect and roadside assistance uh, you have a five year 60 roadside assistance built in in the car um, and when your phone is paired you can activate that right there you have your um, how you want your lights to turn on if they're on when the door is open or if you just like it dark I personally like it dark so I'm gonna leave it like that um, and then you have your sun uh, sunshades so I'm gonna click rear you got your rear there it goes again you have this really nice premium headliner and you have your rear Sun for your back passengers uh, you just press this button again and you could bring that back you can stop it at any time by pressing the button so if you uh only want partial sun you could do that and then you have your front one it's all about how you press it when you press the front one um, you can open just the glass you can tilt the glass up for ventilation you have your sound diffuser right up there um, it's a clear day here pretty pretty nifty and press that button back there it goes one of my only complaints and it's been since 2020 is that you have to manually close this um i don't know why you think we got the technology but uh that, that's one of my only complaints about this vehicle um a great big cubby right here so you have a, a very nice cubby and you also have a, another charging port down there as well um really really cool you can charge all kinds of devices in this car um, so let's do the last third of this video uh, in the driver's seat and we'll go over the unit settings in the head unit um, and and go over some some really cool stuff with Kia Connect. Uh, these vehicles, these videos just get longer and longer, but they get cooler and cooler. So again, the sun is going down. This car looks beautiful at dusk. But we're going to go to my favorite position because I'm kind of a... I like to drive my cars that I'm in. I don't like to be 
passenger princess, but the driver's position. So right away on your left, you have your one touch controls right there for the windows, lock and unlock. You have your mirror selection there. You have your memory seating right here, which is very easy to set. I'm gonna sit in the car to get out of the wind. Sorry about that. Hope that's not too jarring. Um, child locks right there. So you're pressing your child locks that way. Um, you the, the back door zone open or ignore the back windows. But um, I've only accidentally hit that once. So it's not exactly in a horrible position, uh, but you do have your child locks right there. Let's take a look at the mirror. So the mirror, you do have your blind spot detector in the upper left hand corner. You have the little triangle. If someone's in your blind spot, that's gonna highlight. If someone's in your blind spot and you're using your turn signal, that will um, also beep at you as well as well as highlight. Now, one thing that's really cool about this car is when I put this in reverse, those mirrors will go down for your curb view. So your mirrors will tilt when the car is in reverse. Now that's controlled right here. So when I say controlled, I mean if this button is to the left or to the right, you're gonna get curb view. I'm gonna put this guy back in park. If you have it in the center, so that little nub is in the center, and then you go in reverse, nothing happens. So you do have to have that little nub on left or right in order for curb view to work. Uh, these, this little button here just folds in your mirrors. So if you park in a garage, super useful. Uh, but the, that button there just auto, auto turns your mirrors in. When you turn the car off, your mirrors will also fold in as well. Uh, let's go to the light stick. So you have auto lights, which I do prefer because your lights will turn on and off as the sun goes up and down. You do have your voice assistant right here uh, for if you press it once, it'll activate the Kia, which it's cumbersome at first. It will, oops, got to put it in park. It's cumbersome at first. It'll learn how you speak. If you double press it, it'll activate um, um, Apple CarPlay or, or Android Auto uh, if your phone's connected. Mode is interesting. So mode, if I press mode, it's going to cycle through your musical choices so you can select what you do. So if you are a Bluetooth audio phone projection, which is Apple CarPlay or Android Auto uh, and FM, like if you are, those are your, th your three things or even serious radio, you can select the options you like. And then when you use the mode button, you will cycle through those musical settings or those, those uh, sound settings. So mode's pretty useful. You have your volume control here and your tuner control here. So volume up and down, obviously tuner uh, will take you through your radio stations or take you through your music on your phone. You have your answer call here and then you have your custom button. So if I'm gonna press that custom button, let's go right back over here. You have options for that button. So you can do reject a call, end a call, hands-free device, privacy, passenger talk, map, voice memo. You have a bunch of uh, options for for your map as well like you know cancel route or change route to that kind of thing i am of the persuasion where reject a call end a call is the best thing to set it because you kind of have muscle memory you have your accept a call you have your reject call right there but it is customizable you you can do you a uh, really nice view of this steering wheel the steering wheel feels really good in your hands fully telescopic as well so if you take a look on this side here uh, this little nub here you can pull it down and then you can make the steering wheel come in and out and up and down and you can find your setting also on the driver's side you do have your controls here so i could go back a little bit um go up and down that kind of thing let's take a look, look let's go left to right here because i did kind of skip this part um you do have your illumination control so this little uh, guy here will illuminate your screen uh lighter or darker so it makes it brighter I'm gonna turn it down just a scotch, but that's kind of how these two screens get illuminated. You can make them lighter or darker to your experience. Tow, so tow mode is on. When I press that button, tow mode is off. Tow on, tow off. So when it's an easy way to go into tow mode, and I'm gonna show you some tow settings here in a bit. Um, you do have your downward heel assist. You have your auto hold to open up the back hatch, and then your traction control which honestly I don't really think anyone ever needs in this vehicle, but you can turn traction control off and have a lot of fun in this thing because um, it will, it'll, it'll do that. Taking a look here on the right hand side, let's just go to your windshield wipers. So you have your windshield wipers right here. You can set it to auto. I don't want to mess up the glass, but there you go. You can set it to auto, off, 
low and high. I'm actually gonna leave it on off, but that's how you, you manipulate that. And then right here, you change the intensity. And then right here, you turn your back wiper on or off. Um, so it does that as well. Uh, there is an auto rear wiper and I'll show you where that is in the settings. Two pages button, this guy right here is pretty important. That button's gonna change this center screen. So you go from left to right, changing that center screen. Uh, and then the toggle switch right here will move you up and down. So like, let's say I go here, if I move that toggle switch, I'm gonna get tire display. If I move this toggle switch on this one, I'm gonna go through my driving info. Um, honestly, no one's driven this car but me. Um, and no one's going to drive it because after I do this video, it's going to get locked up and just wait for transport. But um, it's one of those things where you can set your digital speedometer. You have a bunch of settings here that you can reset for your uh, fuel, uh, that kind of thing. So if you go one over, you do have your uh, compass. And then you go one over, you have, again, that tire pressure. I kind of like this screen because it shows you your power that's being distributed in your wheels. So it is an all-wheel drive vehicle, but it's not all-wheel drive all the time. Uh, so it is, uh, it's, uh, it's one way to help preserve gas. But again, you can lock your rear wheels and make it, I guess, all-wheel drive all the time, but only up to a certain miles per hour. Um, let's talk about these drive modes one more time. So right now I'm in smart, but watch what happens when I move it over to let's say sport, it changes the configuration of your display. So that's another thing to, to, to know here is, is this display, what you kind of want it on. I'm gonna leave it on eco, just because again, that's kind of the best way to go. Um, one thing I wanna show here is camera view. So if you turn this camera view on, then you can see your camera is going on your left. And there goes my service manager. He's going home for the evening. And let's see if we can catch him on the other side. There he goes. So yeah, so that's just a great way. It's a live camera. You're going to see um, who's in your blind spot. We call it blind spot monitoring view. Uh, so that's that's kind of a, a really super neat little feature. Um, I like it a lot. Let's move up to right here and see if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. Well, you kind of can see it, but you have a heads up display. Now it's all gonna be right there. But in that heads up display, you can configure what you want to see in it, but it will show you things like your speed limit, the speed limit in your area, your blind spot detectors come up on there, which honestly, I use the heads up display for my blind spot a lot more than those cameras. Uh, they're both super nice. And honestly, if you're wearing certain uh, sunglasses, you can't see the heads up display because uh, of them being polarized. But I do find that that heads up display is very, very useful for blind spot detection and for your speed limit and then um, and for your for your um, turn by turn stuff. So if you're if you got your navigation, it'll show you that turn by turn stuff, which is really, really cool. Um, you could turn it on. You could turn it off. You can adjust it so it sits higher up in the display or lower in the display. So it's, it's definitely fully adjustable uh, as well. So you can you can play around with that. And if you don't like it, you could just turn it off or you could turn certain features of it off. But I do find the heads up display very, very useful in this vehicle. Um, right down here in the display, these are your brights and your lights display. So you can tell that I have my auto lights on by what these indicators look like. You have your miles till empty, 374 miles till empty, full tank of gas. You have auto hold. Remember I was telling you about auto hold that when you press that auto hold button, it'll show up on your display. If I go into drive and then I roll forward a bit, I won't because it's in green. So it won't roll forward until I hit the accelerator with my little foot. And then now I move forward. Park it again. If I down press auto hold again, just if I just press the brake with my foot, auto hold re-engages. So uh, super easy to use. And the second you're done with it, like let's say you don't want to use it anymore or if you'd only wanted it for a certain period of time, I, I like to leave it on, but you can just press that button. I'll press bake to deactivate hold, auto hold. There you go. Press the brake and hit that button and then you are good. I'm gonna put myself back in park and we're good. So nice little easy to remember there. You have your torque distribution down there if I'm not mistaken. Um, depending upon what setting you have it on, that display will look a little different. You can see your eco mode and how many miles are on the vehicle, 13 miles. All right, clear as mud. Let's move on because this video is getting kind of long. So 
back arrow, little house. Back arrow will take you back a step, little house will take you home. So this is kind of like the main screen. You can see your time, your media, like if you had the radio on, it'll show right there. And you can see the inlay of the map right there. So if I just want to click that inlay, then I have the map settings. You have a tri screen here, so you can move this up and down. Passenger talk, let's talk about it. That is now talking with the rear passenger seat. So it activates the intercom. That way you don't have to yell at the people in the third row. It just activates the intercom in the car, which is kind of cool. And then you could just end it. A lot of parents like that. That's kind of a nice little selling feature. Compass, time. Uh, I don't know why they do double map, but you can always change what's in this here in the setting. So there's a setting to manipulate the content right there. And if you don't like that little tri view, click that little white arrow and it takes you to the big screen. Uh, the map is insanely useful. I mean, if you just want to punch in a destination, you hit that button, type in what you want, and then it'll set the destination. Uh, so super, super cool. Again, little arrow, house takes you home, little arrow takes me back. Uh, you can zoom in and out, which is nice. You can change the color of this display if you wish uh, to about five different customizable colors, which is also pretty cool. And then you can change kind of like the voice navig, like the voice assistant, like how loud they talk and and the sound effects, you can manipulate all that sound. Um, and little house takes me home. This is a complete touch screen. So you just swipe it towards the driver and then you have your options. I'm not gonna hit all of them, but I'm gonna hit a lot of them. Navigation menu, super easy. Again, you could just go right into search. You can set your destination for home, work, and a bunch of favorites down there. Uh, that way you can easily get back on the highway to get yourself home or kind of just use that however you see fit. I'm a big fan of POI categories. If you've seen my other videos, I talk about them. It's easy, like if you want like a sit down restaurant, I would click restaurants. It kind of tells you these sit down restaurants nearest to you. If you can notice these little guys are grayed out, that's because I don't have a destination in my map. But if I had a destination in my navigation, those guys would uh, populate and then I can click something along my route or near my destination or near the center of map. Um, and then you can change your filters if you go back a step, that's sit down restaurants. If you just want fast food, it'll show you fast food, what's what's near you, same exact thing. So we actually use that a lot when we travel. I am a big fan of that. You have your save places, previous destinations, previous destinations, which comes in super handy. And then you can edit and, and change your route oh, with, these, with these options as well. Little arrow takes me back. Uh, phone, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, super easy to set up, super, super easy. Phone projection, so that's Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You do need to plug in right here with a USB cord in order to do uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto uh, on this vehicle. Um, I have links in my YouTube where I actually have one, the, the company sent me one and I actually like it a lot where you plug in the little box right here and you get um, wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. You can also watch like Netflix and stuff uh, on this screen, which I do all the time. I I've never had an issue with it. Um, it's a little AI box that, uh, there's a link in the description uh, for that kind of stuff. I'll also put links for um, like mats and accessories that I find interesting. And then I also have a small little merch store with Telluride merchandise on there, like mugs and hats and that kind of thing. So. Um, there's a lot of a lot of little accessories you can get for this car. Uh, voice memo, climate, passenger talk, quiet mode is kind of cool. So quiet mode when selected, all radio and media is played only in the front speakers and it'll be lowered in the rear speakers. I would demonstrate it, but then YouTube would probably censor my video. So we're not gonna do that, but quiet mode is super, super cool. And again, this is all just a touch screen. Let's go into setup. And we're gonna try and breeze through this as quickly as we can. Setup, I would strongly recommend setting up your user profile first. So setting up your user profile first, you go to appear, go to driver, you can put your name in here, your profile image, you can pick a little image here from these 11. Uh, you can set up your key at connect and digital key. Um, you can set all that, that up first. The reason I say that first, because if you go into vehicle, which is the next thing I would say for you to do, if you go into vehicle, you have all of this stuff on the left hand side to play with. And if you set this car up and take like 45 minutes and set it up the way you want, and then go to profile and set up your profile, you may have to set some of that stuff up again for your profile. 
Um, so just start with digital profile and then do all this kind of stuff. Because vehicle settings, you're gonna spend a lot of time here and it's gonna do stuff that we kind of talked about. So let's just hit convenience. You could turn off the rear occupancy alert if you don't have little ones. You can turn off the wireless phone charger. There's your rear auto wiper. I'm gonna turn that on because everybody kind of likes that. This car has a digital key, which is really cool. Um, you have to set up your uh, Kia Connect first and then follow the steps into digital key. So if you go into card key, you can enable the car keys to start and unlock the vehicles. And then you can uh, click digital key information and it'll give you that, that kind of stuff to do. But you have to set up your Kia app first and then play around with these digital keys. Full disclosure, I'm a little scared of digital keys. I think I'm always gonna have my key, but um, it's it's kind of something new for you to do with, with these new digital cards and some cars even do it with your phone. This is that two press lock I was kind of hinted at at the beginning of the video. If you turn it, uh, you can lock and unlock the doors by pressing the little button on the outside with one press or two presses. Um, one press will unlock one door, two presses will unlock all four doors and vice versa. I'm gonna leave that on. I'm gonna leave on power lift gate as well, but you can also change, change the speed that the lift gate opens, if it opens at full height, or if it opens at different heights. As you can see there in the little ad animation, you could change the heights, and you can also do user height settings, so you can, you can set that up yourself. Um, oops, hit the back arrow too many times. Where were we? We were under convenience. No, we were under door. Um, one thing I'm going to turn on is smart lift gate. Actually, I'm going to leave them off just in case the guy with the transport has some issues. But you can do smart lift gate open, smart lift gate close. So when you walk away from the vehicle, the lift gate will close. And then you can also set the remote window controls. So if you press the, I believe the unlock button three times, it'll open and close the windows. Um, I'm not really a big expert on that either. I've never been able to get to work right. Ambient lighting is really cool. You can go in here and set up your ambient lighting to link to your drive modes, or you can go in here to color and you can pick a different color or you can go to custom color and you can choose something in all this color wheels. I'm gonna choose blue. So um, pretty cool. And then you also can have these kind of default colors as well. If you link it to your drive modes, if you're in smart, I believe it's blue. If you're in sport, I believe your interior color turns to red but you can do all kinds of cool stuff there. Uh, scooting along, you could do your seat position. Now this is where you can change it to your seat change alert. You can do your uh, ventilation features, that kind of thing. So there's, there's things you could do there. But what I wanna point out is lumbar stabilization system. This is essentially the massage setting in the seats. If you are driving this car for 30 minutes or 60 minutes, the massage feature will activate. Um, which is pretty cool, kind of caught me from by surprise because it's not something that Kia advertised, but um, it's something that does work. It's definitely awesome. You could turn it off and it gives you a nice little three to five minute massage um, of your choosing. That's setting up the massaging seats that are gonna be in the EV9, our full electric Telluride basically. So this is, I think, them playing around with this feature, but um, that is actually pretty cool. And it is there. Climate, again, not going to talk about climate. Let's talk cluster though. Kind of, there's so much in this car that we could be here all day. Um, you can change your cluster theme. So that's kind of what I was talking about right here. Now, my favorite, I'm going to, um, excuse me, I'm going to uncheck link to drive mode and I'm going to go to dynamic. And look at that. It's the sun setting, the sun setting right over there. And then up here, your sun is setting. I'm going to leave it there just because I think it's an impressive. Um, feature it kind of I like how your miles per hour kind of float there uh, but if you want to change that it's under dynamic under cluster but I am gonna leave it on that one uh, but you can do your service interval here you want to do your oil changes every 5,000 miles on this vehicle uh, so that's something you want to do um, let's go heads up display again you can manipulate the heads up display and the content you can turn it on turn it off all that good stuff but it's right there under heads up display drive modes, here's tow mode. So if you're gonna to be towing a vehicle, you have medium weight, heavy weight, and lightweight. As you can see, this little animation kind of gives you a little visual guide of what each one is. And this guy can tow up to 5,500 pounds. Driver assistance, this thing has so many safety features in it. You can turn it on, you can turn them off, you can manipulate them. They're all right here. Um, you just click into one and then you can change it how you see fit. Um, 
So pretty, pretty cool. Let's scoot along, lastly, uh, up in the cluster here. And like I said, I can't hit all of these, but let's go to Kia Connect. Um, roadside assistance so as long as your phone's connected you hit roadside it's going to call roadside assistance for you you have your kia connect settings here activating the service so you're going to press that you're going to agree to terms and service and click next um, your sales rep should or you can do it enter your phone number there and then click submit it's going to text a code to you you punch that code in the car then you could download the kia connect app and then you can do things like remote start remote climate um, vehicle tracking which is going to be pretty cool because I think that's what we're going to set up for my customer so that way he could track his vehicle on the transport all the way to his house just via the app for free which is really neat it is free for the first year after that it continues on a subscription basis if you wish 911 connect is really cool if you're in an accident and your uh, airbags deploy the, the car will call 911 for you um, super super cool strongly recommend Kia connect and your salesperson should be setting that up for you a lot of information. This is a very long video. I'm gonna close with physical buttons. If you don't like the touch screen up there, you have your physical buttons for the map, for the radio. Media, you got your flashers, you got your hazards. Seek track right there, and then you have another customizable button. Again, this is a, if you see a little star, it's a customizable button. You can set that up whatever you want and you also have a button for a click setup it takes you back here to your setup settings so super cool this has a lot of features in it you can kind of see how it's getting dark you can kind of see where those um interior lighting is going to appear in the door underneath the dash to be honest i don't do a lot of videos at dusk and so it's kind of neat kind of seeing where this interior lighting is coming from because I don't do a lot of videos where I can actually see that. Um, awesome. If you guys need a vehicle, if I can help find you a vehicle, again, I sell at MSRP. I'm here in Colorado. Uh, we can order you anything that you want. And then shipping, not that expensive. I mean, going from Colorado to New Jersey was under 1200 bucks. That's what I hear. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, like and subscribe uh, on my channel if you haven't. If you like what you see, it definitely does help me out. I do like what I do. Um, I make these videos informational. Um, I do have a small merch store, which um, hit and miss. It's, it's not the greatest, because honestly, I'm not the greatest, but I'm learning, and hopefully you guys like what you see. Again, look how gray these seats look in the dark. Like now that's getting dusk. I love the fact that these are dark gray seats and you can see X line right there because this is a Kia Telluride um, X line Prestige. Is that right? Did I mess it up when I said it at the beginning of the, of the video? What is this thing? This is a 2024 Telluride SX Prestige X line. So yes, I did say that wrong a little bit at the beginning don't leave me bad comments make it to the end of the video well if you already made it this far you made it to the end all right thank guys thanks and hopefully i see you guys down at the dealership thanks guys